so much for staying with us. This is OI254 and why the morning is the show you're watching. My name is Dereva Hilary. We move to another segment or another discussion rather. Now this is about creating you as a brand. What do you need? What do you require? How can you become the best you? I'm speaking to Moses Minor Morey. He's the Executive Director Corporate Affairs. Good morning, sir. I'm um, fine. Thank you. I must say it's an honor to have you here. It's a pleasure. And um, just like I mentioned, I see you have quite a profile. And I maybe, maybe uh, to break it down, uh, you could tell us who you are. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, as, as you already mentioned, my name is Moses Minor. I head corporate affairs at Zitek University, uh, which is a private university uh, here in the country. <laughs> And uh, my responsibility largely entails uh, creating awareness about the university uh, to all the stakeholders out there and also positioning our brand as uh, the best uh, option mm -hmm. for students seeking education post-secondary. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So in, in other words, you are humbly saying you are a marketer. <laughs> yes. I look for all the soft words to, <laughs> to bring that out. I, I hear marketers can sell anything including uh, the person next to them. Yes. So yes. by the time we leave that this is studio, we'll have sold me to someone. <laughs> So, um, speaking of branding, yes, we uh, there's a way I will brand myself. There's a way I will brand my business, and at times I hear it's it's not about the product; it's about the branding. So, if I'm I'm selling machungwa, it's about how CG I will package the machungwa that people will see. Hey, you see machungwa kawaida. Yes. So, what does it take to be smart in branding, whatever kind, whether in person or in products? I think uh, branding is a component of uh, many issues. Number one, it is very important. It starts with the uh, with self-identification because even for, well, if it's a product, you will say you need to understand uh, what is the product and who is it meant to, uh, to reach. Mm -hmm. uh, so the same case when it comes to an individual. Now, before you uh, engage in individual branding, mm -hmm. you must understand who you are, what are your strong points, and who do you want to uh, who do you want to appeal to. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, uh, we, we do see instances of um, very young people who dress very in a very corporate manner because they want an older generation to take them seriously. We do see very old people, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to the political season, that's when they start using all the shame because they want to be viewed mm -hmm. as uh, friendly to, to the young people. So it, it, it is always a relationship between who you are, what you want to achieve, and the audience that you want to, to speak to. Mm -hmm. yes. Exactly. And I have seen a good number of people trying to struggle of who they are or what they, what they want to be. And in terms of, like you have mentioned, dressing. Yes. Uh, you will see, like, I have been invited to speak to young people, um, let's say high schoolers. Yes. Uh, right now, I'm in suit. Yes. Uh, my, my career calls for this. But when I'm going to speak to those young people, they might dismiss me from the word go or they might receive me. Going to speak to particular persons, how do you define the persons you're going to send or to take the message to? Um, I, I think um, we, uh, we must appreciate that, that there are cultural contexts or situational contexts to whatever is, um, whatever is happening. Uh, there is what the Kenyan, or not just the Kenyan, but maybe the African society will perceive as decent, what the, uh, the Kenyan society will perceive as right, uh, or the majority uh, of, of, of the people that you're interacting with. So you find, in most instances, it, is, it, it has still been a preconceived mentality that uh, the suit is a standard of decency. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I in certain areas. And uh, again, as I say, the context within which you're operating in uh, will define the expectations. But having said that, ultimately, um, a large part of uh, ultimately what consumers will gain from the information that you give mm -hmm. ultimately will be determined by what you will actually say. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, sometimes it, it um, uh, uh, that is why we f currently we are seeing a uh, a change in perception where or us in, uh, previously you might have been expected to go in for that interview or that presentation uh, in a suit progressively 
the employer will be more keen with what you're delivering uh, to, uh, to them as an employer. And you can only be able to prove those issues by how you communicate and how you're able to prove uh, what you actually see. Uh, for example, your, uh, if, I, if I take my own case, I'm a marketer, I'll have all the, all the nice suits will not bring in clients. Mm -hmm. By my ability to convince uh, someone to take up a product or a service mm -hmm. is what will, will, will determine. But the issue here is that sometimes that decent dressing gets you through the door because sometimes we will say you need to get through the door. You cannot convince anyone if you're still you know, on the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes uh, you, you realize that those uh, whereas they might not have the actual impact on the ultimate decision, mm -hmm. it is what that gets you through uh, through the door and at least gets you to be heard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Speaking of marketing, we are living in time and age where we have moved from one-on-one -on -one conversation digitally. I have a small business, I go online. Yes. So I'm either texting or I'm being creative with what I have. Maybe I can do a selfie video or I can have just a small thing. I have seen s uh, different adverti advertisements on mainstream and even social media. Do you think the digital era has bring um, a significant change in how people used to communicate like marketing itself is there a variance in the analog marketing and the current one yeah definitely there, there, is, there is a huge shift uh, because what um, changes is um, the, the, and, and sometimes it's not just an issue of uh, of, of of the content uh, all the platform but the whole nature of of, of, uh, of communicating uh, we all say that uh, the main reason why someone will switch on Y254 uh, is to consume content. No one will switch on Y254 to watch adverts. Mm -hmm. So adverts were intrusive to their uh, consumption of, uh, of media. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, no one uh, goes to Facebook to watch adverts. But in some cases, because this, the, the digital platforms have been structured as solution providers mm -hmm. so someone will go onto that platform seeking a product they're not seeking your advert but they're seeking a solution to a challenge uh, that they may have mm -hmm. so your ability to be positioned as a solution provider is is, is one of the most um, important aspects for anyone who seeks to go into the um, in, into the digital uh, marketing space because that is all ultimately creates believability because of course the biggest challenge with digital marketing you don't know who you're dealing with exactly. uh, so for you for me to believe that um, uh, the person I'm speaking to is able to deliver the service that I need mm -hmm. they have the task upon them to create believability to create uh, the confidence in me mm -hmm. that they're able to meet the, the service that I offer so uh, one of the key uh, challenges and it's both a challenge and opportunity mm -hmm. uh, largely also for the young people mm -hmm. is to ask themselves how do they develop themselves into uh, believable authorities in a certain area mm -hmm. uh, of whichever nature sometimes it's it's purely even from an entertainment perspective mm -hmm. that you're consistently able to provide um, fresh content uh, that is, you know, that, 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 that is authentic. You're not just copying something that everyone sees mm -hmm. on a daily basis. In that way, I'll be keen to see, oh, by the way, has X posted a new video today. And in that, be, in that respect, you build a profile that you can later be able to monetize. Mm -hmm. But if you repeat what everyone else is, is doing, mm -hmm. you create a very low likelihood of people wanting or looking forward to consuming new content uh, from you. So the same thing, you know, if uh, someone is selling shoes, when they are viewed as a provider of information of what are the new shoe trends you're more like a style advisor as opposed to a shoe seller i'm more likely to believe in you because you most likely have an idea about what mm -hmm. what fashion is so when you tell me buy this shoe mm -hmm. you most likely know what you're talking about mm -hmm. so creating that believability i think is always the biggest challenge in the digital space and exactly speaking of which do you think we as a people we have lost uh, maybe see the elementary f uh, fact of having a conversation with someone are we becoming redundant in a way that uh, because you see I hear they are extroverts and introverts yes. I'm into business um, I don't speak much yes. so the only thing I can do is I have this kind of shoes please buy but I can't convince one person I'm selling this kind of shoes I can't speak uh, orally about this product are, are we losing that value so much um, 
I, I tend to think of it as a, um, as, as a double-edged sword. Uh, because what, what the digital space uh, has done is create opportunity for, uh, if you were to use the term, the introvert to also, you know, be engaging. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality of, um, of uh, the marketing space is that one-to-one uh, -one communication still will always have a place. Mm -hmm. Because even in most cases, if you look at when we made a transition from working from home and we had to do our, our Zoom and uh, all those online meetings, mm -hmm. you still needed to communicate. And I think that's one of the things that, um, as you're saying, maybe the challenge might lie largely with the young people who are losing the need to develop strong communication skills that I cannot uh, concisely express myself in a text message. I feel the need to use short form mm -hmm. and all that. I'm not able to uh, concisely express myself in uh, good grammar, whether Swahili, English, or Gekoyo as, uh, as Gogi Wationgo did, mm -hmm. that you can concisely express yourself. I think that remains the biggest challenge. So you find a group of people that are not able to express themselves in any specific uh, set of language. Uh, if you get to speak, you will have to do maybe a, a mix of languages. Uh, so the ability to express yourself, because uh, that is what uh, people get to understand. Uh, I will only get to understand what I can do for you if you're able to effectively communicate to me. Mm -hmm. So when that young person is not able to tell the, a potential funder if they have an idea, mm -hmm. a potential employer if they have, uh, if they're looking for a job, or any other kind of relationship that they need because currently the uh, the world today is, is largely driven by networks the kind of networks that you build mm -hmm. determine uh, the kind of opportunities that you unlock for yourself so how do you get into a group mm -hmm. and you're able to convince other people to work with you mm -hmm. so i think as you're saying it is very very important that the young people still remember that communication is key communication is very very key mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how people will also uh, be able to relate with you in terms of exploiting opportunities all right now b before i task you with your profile yes how how do i now maintain my brand i have created this brand how do i sustain myself throughout whether storms or not like the, it happened during the covid 19. uh i think one of the most important things is um and you see uh, this is um this is a trajectory that you build, uh, that you build over time, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think one of the one, one of the most important things uh, that I think uh, not just myself but a lot of people have learned is in, in this duration is that you always have to expect the unexpected. It comes with. I think for a long time, people the, 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 there is a segment of people who lived the assumption that uh, the unimaginable will never happen. And uh, someone, someone described it to me as falling in love with your employer, mm -hmm. uh, where you assume you're in a relationship that will never end. Mm -hmm. Always remember that um, you are an employee and you're there based on the premise that you offer a service for which uh, the employer needs and is able to pay for. So at any point, if the employer is not able to pay or does not need the service, you are dispensable. And I think that that... that basic premise is very, very important for anyone to be able to navigate uh, the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the unfortunate situations that might come about. Because uh, for a lot of people, when, when these situations came about, mm -hmm. there largely were two groups of people. There are those who would stay in denial for a very long period. They would mourn, I've lost my job, I've lost my livelihood, mm -hmm. my life has turned upside down. And there are those who immediately moved to another alternative. It's not easy, but it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the... It's a nature of life that life changes. So being able to ask yourself, number one, what transferable skills do I have? Mm -hmm. Are my skills custom made only for my current employer or are they usable in another situation? Mm -hmm. uh, number two, are these skills optimized for uh, self-employment? Uh, because that is always the starting point. Mm -hmm. um, if I was... Um, uh, if I will, if I am uh, the marketer at a certain institution, how am I able to also start my own? If can I start my own business and market my products? Can I offer that skill mm -hmm. uh, to someone who is struggling? Uh, and number three, of course, is um, the ability to have an an open eye for opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being able to keep in touch with uh, with, the, with different people. Sometimes it relates to speaking to friends, mm -hmm. uh, having an open mind. Because that is what gets you through uh, points of uncertainty. Because um, in other situations, if you're 
if you are laid off in normal circumstances, mm -hmm. uh, you will say that there are still opportunities that exist in the employment market. But during the COVID period, uh, that is a time when uh, you call your friends and they tell you, to bado watu So, mm. you know, the, the opportunities are much more limited. Mm. So it, 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 is, it is also an issue of building uh, emotional fortitude that helps you uh, overcome those situations. All right, we have ab about five minutes. How did you choose this career path that you have today? How, how did you realize yourself, this is what I want to be, and um, now finding the job market? It's very interesting. I never trained to be what I do today. I actually trained to be an accountant and an, econ or an economist at the same time. I should have been in the area panel <laughs> where they were discussing the, the economics issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, getting into Zetec uh, University, I found an institution that is welcoming to uh, the, the promise of a young person. Uh, someone who is young and is desirous of achieving uh, certain goals in life. And within that uh, platform, I was given an opportunity to express myself in terms of uh, my career aspirations. Uh, and, and within that space, I was able to identify something that I love doing, within which I have built a career, uh, uh, 14 years plus uh, doing this. And, and I think that is also a, a, an opportunity that we like to extend to both the staff and uh, the students that we have at the university. The ability for you to realize that a university education is supposed to open perspectives for you, not essentially a university education. Any post-secondary education mm -hmm. is supposed to open up your perspectives, to make you see uh, great opportunities, develop in you not just the knowledge, but the skills and attitude that make you ideal to work you know in any in any situation and based on that you're able to uh, to carry transferable skills of course there are those basic skills that mm -hmm. uh, will always be applied you cannot you will not start saying that now teachers go and become engineers and doctors go and become lawyers but uh, when it comes to uh, delivery of uh, solutions to an organization because at the end of the day every organization is facing challenges and they're looking for people to provide solutions to what they do mm -hmm. so it, it, it's an issue of, of a mentality. Mm -hmm. It's an issue of mentality that uh, whereas I'm trained to do this much, I can go beyond uh, what I'm able to do. So a lot of uh, job shadowing is very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, mentorship is very, very critical. Mm -hmm. Ability to participate in core curricular activities is very, very important. Ability to take up internal challenges within the universities. You'll find universities offering, you know, innovation competitions and all that. Those are a lot of things that we try to do at Zetech University. Mm -hmm. So that any student going through whichever program they do, uh, they come out with the perspective that whereas I came in to study for a Bachelor of Economics and Statistics or I came to uh, study a Bachelor of IT, uh, I am optimized to be more than just what my career calls me to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, given a chance uh, to ev every man his ambitions yes. given a chance would you change your path today and maybe go to accounting or do something different um i think currently i really love what i do and uh, the the career change options uh that would be in my interest would be football and music and my talent does, does not allow me to do that <laughs> so i think for now i'm stuck in uh, in business development and corporate affairs what takes to be a good communicator and a marketer for that case uh, i think co command of uh, your content is very very important ability to communicate effectively mm -hmm. uh, confidence um, uh, lastly uh, saying a uh, far much less as uh, that's something i'm still working on uh, I, I i usually aspire to be a toastmaster and uh, during the toast uh, the, the uh, those sessions there's something they call an r counter someone who counts the number of times you say ah mm. so that is something i'm still uh, i'm still working on <laughs> but i think the ability for you to to know what it is that uh, you want to say uh, understanding your your audience because sometimes you know you have the, a, a very great uh, content, but uh, your audience is not interested. How do you adjust to the audience that is, uh, that is listening to you? Those are very, very critical aspects. All right. Thank you so much, Amaina Moses, for coming uh, and trying to put that thing in perspective. And of course, I'm sure someone back home has learned something, especially when you are in marketing or whatever field that you are in commanding your space.
it's very much important. And thank you back home for keeping us company. He has been my guest, Moses Maina Morelli, Executive Director, Corporate Affairs. And my name is Dereva Hilary. Thank you so much for staying with us throughout that morning session. I'll be seeing you again in the evening. Enjoy the rest of our programmings. Good morning.